Technical course, narrow roads. Welcome to stage nine of the Intelligentsia Cup. This is Lake Bluff Criterium, and if there's one thing I learned last year, starting position is crucial. So I lined up early this year to get a good starting position, and literally 30 seconds into this race, there was a massive pileup. I wish I had my cameras rolling at the time. It was at corner number two. It held up pretty much the entire field. So the officials decided, let's just try this again, round two. Lined everybody back up, and we just restarted the, uh, the race. As a result, I lost my good position. I started like mid-pack or something like that. So I spent about the first half of this race trying to move up, and that's about where we pick up action. We're halfway through this race, and, and already we've lost probably about 60% of the field. We're down to maybe 40 riders. On a technical course like this, cornering is so important. Like I'd argue it's more important than fitness, and here's why. Out of the 120-ish starters, probably only 30 finished. And I can guarantee you that most of those dropped riders probably have a higher level of fitness than me. Let's go through a couple of laps here. I'll try to show you guys why this course is so difficult and hopefully share some tips with you on how to stay efficient, especially through the corners. See, the problem with a course like this is it's so technical, there's just not many places to move up. Not many places to even pedal your bike and carry your momentum. So those areas where you can pedal your bike and carry your momentum, like the start-finish straight, everyone's doing that. Everyone's pushing 800, 900, 1,000 watts. And it's just, you, you can't do 1,200 watts every lap and, and make one pass. So you have to find other ways, kind of clever ways to make up, make up ground. And saving energy by carrying as much momentum through the corners is going to save your ass in the long run because that's going to allow you the energy to match those hard accelerations through the start-finish straight, for example. There's just a guaranteed hard, hard acceleration through the final corner up the hill. Because like I said earlier, that's one of the few opportunities on this course to build momentum, carry speed. Everyone's doing it. Also, another spot is right here, kind of the back section of the course between, what, corners four and five. There's just always going to be a hard acceleration through there. And that's, that means it's not a good place to make a pass. It's a good place to, to take a, um, a good line, carry your speed through the corner so you don't have to smash 1,000 watts. And um, you can try to get a good draft, which doesn't look like I'm, I'm doing here. But um, we're going to talk about line selection, and we're going to talk about taking really efficient corners on technical crits like this. But before we get into those three tips, let's finish out this lap. This is the final corner into the start-finish straightaway. Most important corner on the course. Uh, we're going to be talking more about that later for sure. Um, you can see that, yep, it's just a watt bomb every time. There's really no way around it. You can see, actually, there's gaps opening up now. And, oh yeah, I remember this. This is the, the Novo Nordisk Sprinter. He is super fast. And this is a testament to what I was saying earlier. That's not so much about fitness as it is your cornering ability if, if you're even if you're super fit and you're taking sloppy corners you're going to get dropped because you just can't keep closing gaps down and that's why tail gunning on a course like this is just a bad idea you can sit at the back you can probably take good lines through corners but you're just eventually going to get popped what will happen is it'll get single file like it is most of the most of this race it was just single file somebody's going to get dropped there's going to be some gap it might be a wheel in front of you it might be 30 wheels in front of you you just don't know where that happens, and you could get inadvertently dropped. Like, you don't even know you're dropped, but you're just dropped. Like, the field splits on a, on a really difficult course like this. That can happen. So that's not a good place to be, and um, really the best place to be in terms of taking, like, the best line choices through all these corners is, is the top five, top ten, kind of that bubble. And um, the problem is everybody wants to be up there, so it's difficult. It's real cagey up there. Um, you really have to fight for your position up in the top five, top ten, and... My plan was to approach that top five, top ten bubble uh, with, uh, you know, two, maybe two laps to go, uh, one or two laps to go, something like that. Um, I wish I had the fitness um, and the legs to, to just stay up there like some of these guys do, just stay up in the top five, top ten. But um, I was realistic, and I thought my best chance was to, to move up into that position, like I said, with maybe one or two laps to go. But that only matters if I have energy at the end of the race. I'm not going to be able to move into position if I've burned all my matches taking bad corners and taking bad lines. So let's talk about my three tips on how to corner efficiently and save your energy. All right, so my first tip is to let a small gap open up. Seems counterintuitive, right? Why would you want to let a gap open up? Drafting is a huge part of this sport, right? It's okay to let a small gap open up on your approach. It, it does a couple of things. First, it lets you take a brief rest. And then also you, you get to choose the best line through the corner. And if you nail it, you'll be right back in the draft by the time you exit the corner. And so look ahead before you do this. It, it doesn't really work if it's like single file, super fast ahead of you. Um, if it's kind of slowing down, that's when this works best. There's no sense in, in charging into a corner with a ton of speed just to come into the back of a group and have to have to um, squeeze a bunch of brakes only to, to reaccelerate. 
Also, you know, it has a lot to do with your confidence in the corners. If if you're not as good as cornering as the guys in front of you and you leave a gap open up, it's kind of defeats the purpose of doing it in the first place because you're just going to let that gap open up through the corner. And then you're going to be out of the draft in the uh, next section. So the whole idea here is to uh, carry all of your speed momentum through the corner and um, into the next straightaway and to keep a consistent effort. And you also don't want to follow too closely approaching like a really sharp technical corner unless you... You really trust the wheel in front of you, say it's a teammate or something like that, because the problem is, is you're putting a lot of trust in how the person in front of you, maybe even the person in front of them is going to take the corner. And if they make a mistake, then you're going to have to hit the brakes and hitting the brakes is like set, taking the energy right out of your legs. So that's definitely not ideal. All right. So my second tip is line selection. I see a lot of guys, even in the P12 field who haven't quite figured this out. So here's how you get free speed through a corner. Just like with the last tip, and spoiler, the next one too, the idea is to preserve as much of your speed and momentum as possible. So the ideal line selection will lengthen the corner. In other words, it'll straighten your path as much as possible. So in the case of this left-hander, I'm going to move to the right curb without hitting that pothole, hit the apex of the corner without sliding out on that manhole cover, and then I'm going to swing it out again to the right-hand curb. And this does a couple of things. First of all, it allows you to be more efficient by pedaling through more of the corner. A straighter line means less risk of a pedal strike and a crash. It also allows you to preserve more of your speed because you're not needing to slow down as much to prevent from losing traction. So basically more confidence in your equipment. And while we're on the topic of approach speed, let's discuss my, my last tip, tip number three, which is to take the corner with confidence. Now, this is, this is multifaceted. This is uh, having a low center of gravity, having trust in your equipment's a big one, and also trusting your approach speed and your line choice. Now, I admit, this one takes a lot of time and practice. And I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but again, just like the other two, the whole idea is to be efficient, maintain your speed as you exit the corner. And to do that, you need bike handling skills, and you need the understanding and the confidence of your equipment to push it right to that limit of losing traction. I remember years ago, I went with a friend, we watched the Tour de France, and on this particular day, it was a time trial stage, it was, had a little bump on it, we went to the downhill side, it was a little less crowded, and we just parked it right at this hairpin, and you know, when most people think about the World Tour athlete's ability, it's on the climbs and the sprints and the long time trial efforts and that sort of thing, but the most shocking thing to me, and, and st sticks with me to this day, was seeing these guys bike handling ability on this downhill hairpin and how hard they were pushing their equipment right to that limit. They would come into this corner at high speed and wait until the absolute last moment to scrub off the speed, almost to that point of locking up the brakes, just before leaning into the apex as if it were the last corner of a crit. And that was all to save like one or two seconds. And think about it. I mean, there take 10 of those corners and that's the difference between winning and losing the tour. And in this case it was, it was 2011. It was uh, when Cadell won. Anyway, I got sidetracked. Uh, if you're cornering well here on this course on any crit for that matter, I mean, what there's like six corners on this course for 90 minutes. There's probably hundreds of corners. And if you can save a second in each one, that's the difference between being in the winning position and been being dropped. So, um, yeah, and just another reason why it's so important to, to have good bike handling ability and cornering skills and have confidence in your equipment. I see that a lot in like Cat 5, Cat 4 new racers. They come in with all this fitness. They've trained really hard, but then they're so tense and so tight through the corners and they're losing so much time through the corners. It's If you're confident, you're like loose on the bars. You're not gripping the bars super tight and your whole upper body isn't all tense. It's just very smooth and and you're saving you're saving energy just so not, by not being so tense in your upper body. All right, I've been talking, talking, talking. Let's fast forward a bit, and uh, let's watch the end of the race. So you'll see me do some really hard efforts as the race gets all strung out here. There was actually a, a really desperate chase going on at the front right now because there's still a breakaway group of three off the front. And um, I wish I was I wish I was able to be at the front moments like this, but. On a, on a course of this nature and with all the big teams that were out there, I'm just in survival mode, to be honest. 
And uh, okay, so here we go. So I'm moving up now. You saw I just I just move up like five or six spots. We're like two and a half laps to go. I think it's about time. Actually, a little bit less. Or, or we're coming into two laps to go. So I think it's about time that I get up into that that bubble that I was talking about. You know, the top ten riders or so, because this is a really critical moment of the race. It seems like that group of three is probably going to stay away. And just for a second here, just for a moment in this 90 minute race, it's slowed down enough for me to, uh, to move up into that position. So let's just go through the last couple of laps and yep, there it was two to go. Let's go through these last couple of laps and, um, I'll talk about what I did right, what I did wrong and, um, how I spend the little bit of energy I have left after racing super hard. You can see the field it started about, about 120, something like that. And we're probably down to like maybe 30 or 40 riders at most. So it's been a really hard day. And that was my first mistake. Did you see that rider with the blue kit and the red stripe on the leg? Let me go back really, really fast and just show you. This guy um, is really fast. He's always up in the mix and I raced against him last year too, and he just moved up on the outside, and I just really, I really should have just been glued on his wheel because he always seems to be um, a top ten finisher. And I think a couple of days he was like podium top three, so I really should have stayed on that wheel. And he just moved up like, I mean, you guys saw him. That was he probably moved up like eight or ten places right there, and that had been a pretty good idea to stay on that wheel. Um, and now, I, instead, I kind of lost a couple of spots, and. It would have been at a, at a very small cost in energy to move up like he did because it was a moment when it was bunching up like that. And I've, I've identified those moments to you guys before. That's always a good moment to, uh, to move up. You can see it's not as fast as it was when it was single file, but also we're coming into one lap to go. So everyone's trying to be up in that, in that uh, you know, top five, top ten. So it is bunching up a little bit, and I am going to try to move up here because I am not in the best position just yet and we're coming into one lap to go so um, so you see I'm still doing a thousand watts pretty sustained effort right there just to hold the wheel so this isn't a good time to move up obviously Um, but maybe if let's see um, maybe if it uh, if the bunch is coming into this corner up here then I can find a good a good chance to move up okay bell bell lap this is it uh 1100 meters to go and yikes i got some i got some work to do if i want to get up there 170 beats per minute heart rate that's on stage nine that's about as high as it goes so i need to be smart here and this guy goes and now i'm not going to lose that that chance that i did on at the basically the same spot on the last lap so now i'm on i'm glued on this guy's wheel but gaps are already opening up so that's a sign that it's i've already left it a bit too late and through this technical section there's really just really no passing look You've, you've entered a corner, you're back on the gas, and then you're immediately setting up for the next corner. And now you have these guys on the left who are getting sketchy because they're pulling off. They've done their work. They were leading it out. And now look, 1,100 watts, and <laughs> the gap is opening up. So I probably could have taken those corners better, but check out behind me. There's a huge gap behind me too. So there's been a massive split, and there's the front of the race, but here I am just trying to make up ground. And I took that corner as fast as I was comfortable taking it. And now it's just time to sprint because this is one of the few opportunities to make a pass. And I didn't give myself an opportunity to do so. So at this point, I'm just trying to get back on the wheel again, take this corner as fast as I can curb to curb. And now just head down and completely empty the tank all the way to the line. But I mean, check it out. It's just too little too late. And I was really hoping for a better result on this stage because I felt like I was cornering really well. And I felt like I was saving a lot of energy, but Man, oh man, these guys are fast, and uh, these gaps don't help either. So I, I pop off a sprint, and um, I lied. My heart rate still got to 178, but um, that was uh, that was about all I had. So I think it was good for 16th, I think. It was something like that. Not fantastic, but um, I was really happy to finish this stage. And, um, you know, that's like over 100 people that uh, <laughs> that I finished ahead of. 16th isn't, isn't anything to write home about, but I was still pretty happy with the result. So, um, hey, thanks for watching, guys. And um, one more stage, uh, pretty thrilling stage 10. So make sure you check that out. I'm going to try to get that up as soon as possible. And uh, see you guys at the next one.